In this video you will learn what surface modeling in CAD actually is and the following lesson is just one module out of my new free surface modeling introduction course for beginners and this course covers all the basics and fundamentals ensuring you excel in surface modeling. Starting with explaining NURBS and CAD you will dive into the key principles of continuity and tangency. Through hands-on exercises you will master surface modeling techniques by modeling objects like a shampoo bottle and cylinder connections. Additionally, Additionally, you will get mindset training to tackle complex projects and solve common problems like smoothing surfaces and working with lofts. And as a grand final, there is a special section on how to model a product design from scratch with all the learnings. So enroll in this free course today and start your journey in surface modeling with plasticity. So check out the first link in the description box next to the video and now let's dive in into this tutorial. So just very quickly, what is surface modeling? So surface modeling is a technique in CAD, so it's a subform that focuses on creating and manipulating the external surfaces of an object. So this is the most important thing that you have to understand. Surface modeling is only about the external surfaces most of the time. So again, just from my course, some examples. So here on the left, you see it's a uh, so it's like a glue gun an industrial tool or on the right a motorcycle concept so everything what you see on the outside right and this is exactly the biggest thing that surface modeling is this but it's not this and on the left we have surface modeling and again this is what you just see on the outside so it's the aesthetics it's the form and also even the function, we will cover that in a second. But on the right, you see solid modeling. So this is then, again, manufacturing, precision, it, um, like all of those pieces and parts, they, they have a purpose on how they work and interconnect and they move. And you see, they don't look aesthetical or good. They don't have to because they are inside, right? So they don't, no one cares how they look in 99.999% of the products. And again here, so we have a car example and we can break down a car in, in two categories. So we have this inside thing. So the engine, like all of those suspension and uh, not suspension. Yeah, you know uh, what I mean. So we have all that engine in the middle. We have all, that, all those moving pieces and all those mechanics that again, this is uh, solid modeling, but then we have surface modeling. So again, surface modeling is about the exterior, how it looks the outside. So what we humans actually see. So the aesthetics, right? And here you see this car. So if you're new to surface modeling, you don't understand what's happening here, but a car body or any project, uh, any product is built out of surfaces. So this is what we will practice and cover in this course. Right, and also surface modeling is concerned, again, absolutely solely with the shape and the aesthetics of the surface. So yeah, just <clears throat> two quick examples again from my courses, but on the left, it's we are just creating the helmet, the, the how it looks, the aerodynamics, the design. We don't care what's inside. We don't care about the material it's made of. We don't care about the different layers for the protection and everything what in a helmet happens. And especially, so for example, this action cam, this uh, DJI, we don't create anything what's in the inside. So all of those thousands of electronics, chips and, 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 and stuff. Surface modeling is just the outer um, appearance. And why surface modeling is so important in CAD? Because we have absolutely unparalleled flexibility and accuracy in design. And in professional industries, so product design, automotive, surface modeling is the absolute cornerstone, the fundamental of creating visually appealing and aerodynamically efficient projects, uh, products. So what do I mean by that? Again, on the left, because it's the outer appearance, in the first example with this guy and the beard shaver, it has to feel 
um, aesthetically pleasing when you touch it, right? And when you shave yourself. So it's not, it shouldn't be just a, like a rectangle, right? So just a, just a brick or so, right? It has to have a function for ease of use and comfort. And so the same for a car. Best example, it's not just the box. It, it, it has follow aerodynamics. It, it has again a lot of, um, function in that. And so what I just told you already, anti-surface modeling is, for example, like that, right? So the right car, okay, maybe you could uh, say, okay, the new uh, Tesla Cybertruck is also anti-surface modeling. So we could say that. But yeah, the ride is not aerodynamic. It just doesn't look good, right? It's, yeah, it's, of course you understand it, but I just wanted to make this point because I find it uh funny and again the left so the left Game Boy thing this is again solid modeling so if you want to recreate this Game Boy uh, thing you would do it with a, a solid modeling that would be very very fast and you would not have to use surface modeling right because again surface modeling is so as you see those lines is aesthetic, it's flow, it's beauty, like women, you know, like with the curves. So we men are basically more solid modeling, right? Because we have all of, we are so edgy, or I don't know if that's the word, edgy, but like we look more like a box, like take a bodybuilder, right? But the beautiful woman has like a curves and is aesthetical and just beautiful. So a, a woman is surface modeling. Okay, now I'm even comparing humans to uh, to cat i'm really getting crazy but yeah just a little bit having fun here and surface modeling ensures that the final design meets both aesthetic and fu functional requirements uh, very important so i just told you that so if you take a beard shaver it's it it's not just or oh, it has to look good there has to be functionality there has to be like comfort there has to be some purpose behind the form and the shapes. So beard shaver, best example, you touch it all the time, it has to feel smooth and good. And the same with the PlayStation. So the controller, the controller has uh, some people, I don't know, use this controller in their hands 12 hours per day, it has to feel good. And yeah, so uh, the PlayStation 5, the console itself, that's a little bit different. It doesn't has a function, a, a purpose, but the the console itself it just has to look good the aesthetic in this particular example right so you have the playstation thing and the controller is more functional and looks amazing and the console itself is more for the aesthetics because you put it in 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 your living living room and it just has to look good okay and again aesthetic needs functional requirements so exactly this mouse, it's, it feels amazing, right? It's, it's, it's not aerodynamic, but I mean, it's, it's created so your hand can rest and it feels good and stuff. And let's cover even more advantages of surface modeling. So it's literally the only technique that effectively handles the intricate and complex geometries requ required in high end design. It's literally the only technique. Why? Because you can't create, again, a course from my a helmet from my course, you can't create this helm with solid modeling Boolean techniques, right? Or like this jet ski. This is pure surface modeling only from the outside. You can't create in any other way in CAD and in, in, in NURBS modeling that kind of stuff without surface modeling. The same this motorcycle it's okay we have a few solid modeling parts so uh, the 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 brake disc and the tires maybe but the body the aesthetics the aerodynamics you can only create with surface modeling so especially a car right on the outside so a car is the prime example of surface modeling but also industrial product design so again just an example from my course this is just the outer shell and you have so many details and flows and, 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 and interesting things happening and you can't create that, um, body with solid modeling techniques. And now 
why I'm so excited about surface modeling, why I focus mostly on them. So I also have some beginner Boolean um, technique courses, but now I, I just want to go much more to surface modeling because of this reason. So it has a huge compatibility and important across multiple industries. Its ability to produce highly detailed and accurate models makes it the go-to technique for professional designers and big companies. So surface modeling is used literally for everything. This is the whole point of my courses, my tutorials, my training, what I'm giving you, because, you know, I just see myself as I just want to put in you the techniques and workflows to master surface modeling. Okay, because surface modeling, you can use this then for all of so sorts of different stuff. So I just teach you the general workflows, techniques and tips and tricks and tools so you can create your own products like a vacuum cleaner or your uh, PS5 controller. So again, an electronic product or you, you are interested in cars so you can then create cars or you are interested in power tools, right? In industrial design. So you can create those or you are interested like in airplanes and, and helicopters and like all that aero industry. Then you can, with those surface modeling techniques, you can create that or again, just some uh, products like, uh, the, okay, that's a concept, but um, like this uh, hair dryer or you can even use surface modeling for concepts. So for sci-fi and not those Boolean beginners stuff that everyone can do in five minutes. And I don't know if I look at that, I just click away because it looks boring, but you can use surface modeling in a much more advanced, aesthetical, beautiful way, or just do some sculptures and just do some crazy stuff as well as do 3d printing and, you know, surface modeling. I just want to teach you like this very, like the fundamentals, the core basics, and then you can use them in all of your different fields that you are interested in. So now we are warm to get and find out why surface modeling in plasticity? Why should we, or why are you using, or why it's the right decision that you bought maybe plasticity or you think about that? And why actually use plasticity for service modeling and not all of those hundred other tools that we have. So let's find out in the next module. And if you found that lesson helpful and you want to learn more about surface modeling, check out my free course with over 40 modules explaining everything about surface modeling that you need as a beginner. So sign up today with the first link in the description box next to the video. And I hope I can see you in there. Have a nice day. Bye.